come on. A little juicy in the juicies right here. Oh, there's one. Go. Come here. Oh, no hook set. No hook set. Don't get around that pole. Howdy. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Let me ask you a question real quick. You ever just get in the truck and you're like, I'm gonna go fish somewhere new. That's literally what I have just decided. Today's video is sponsored by Mystery Tackle Box. How fitting that this is gonna be a mystery today. I was literally on my way to a lake. As you guys know, I don't I don't fish the same lake all the time. I know my channel name's Lake Fork Guy. I, I hardly ever go to Lake Fork. I, you know, I go there a few times a year. I like to switch it up. I like to travel. Honestly, I get bored with fishing the same lakes and it keeps me on my toes. I feel like you guys learn more when I'm traveling around. I'm always trying to figure things out myself. It's truly like me figuring out the fish as we go along. So I think that helps everybody out. Helps me become a better angler. I don't really fish tournaments anymore, so this is kind of my way to, to hone my dangle skills. So I was on my way to this lake, and then I saw this other lake on the map as I was going. I was like, yeah, you know, I've never fished here before. I don't really know what it's about. I want to go discover it and see if I can catch fish. I know it has docks on it. Uh, we just had a ton of rain. I was planning on fishing some docks anyway, and I thought, you know, yeah, this place has got a ton of docks. Let's go see if we can catch some fish on this new body of water. Mystery Tackle Box is a subscription-based tackle service that caters to anglers of all kinds. What's great about them is they have a team of researchers that are always looking at new baits coming into the market and the times of years that these baits are gonna be best for you. So they pick them out, they send them right to your door, and they even give you information about how to fish those baits, where to fish those baits. They have a library of videos and information that's gonna help you be a better angler. This makes the perfect gift for any angler in your family, anybody interested in fishing, or for yourself or somebody you know that just wants to get into fishing more, wants to learn new techniques, new lures that you're not seeing on the regular retail shelves, and they have a variety of different subscription services. You could even get just one box, or you could get six months, three months, a year, whatever caters to you. They are going to hook it up and make sure that you're happy. Go ahead and get signed up if you haven't already. I'll make it easy for you. There's a link in the description, and you can use the code MONDO. Again, that is code MONDO, and you'll save on your first subscription. So just get it started off right. A little discount. And let me just show you the layout of what I've got in this month's Pro Box and my game plan of dock fishing out here. So there's tons, tons of docks. Every time I go to a lake that has docks and I've never been there before, that's usually what I end up starting uh, to do because fish live on docks year round. It's really good summertime. You don't have to know a whole lot about the lake to fish docks. If you know how to fish docks, which we're gonna get into here in a little bit, it's just an easy way to target fish if you're unfamiliar with the lake. And we got a good summer lure set up right here. We got a cream speed screamer. This is a creature bait. Uh, I'm actually going to use this as a jig trailer on a little juicy jig. It's one of my favorite dock fishing uh, lures, uh, underspin. So these are really good summertime lures right here. I'm going to put that, a little saucy swimmer on that most likely. Now I am most confident in a jig. I, I, I almost never go out to the lake without uh, rigging up a jig. And if I see any open water activity, fish busting at the surface, anything like that, I'll definitely put on an underspin or some sort of little swim bait uh, and, and target those fish that way. But we've got stained water, we had a bunch of rain. Usually crankbaits are good in that stained water and so are jigs and Texas rigs. And that is my jam. That is my jam and jelly right there, y'all. I love to fish a jig. I will fish all day without a bite on a jig because I just love to do it. But we're gonna go figure it out. New lake, I've got about five hours out here, so I'm gonna go try to figure them out. Let's see what we can do, y'all. So this time of year, what I'm looking for is docks that have deep water access. That way those fish have safety. They can move up on the docks, they can feed, live around there. When it gets rough, they'll just go out to deep water. So that's what I'm looking for right now. Okay. Water definitely looks up. Deep water close by, there's a brush pile. All of these questions, the mysteries that lie below the water, that's what makes us anglers and fishermen. Try to get it up in the cranny here. Ooh. That was a cast. I've actually got 12 on here, not 15. That is uh, scary. 
but I can cast it really well. More likely to get bites. I do see some bait fish swimming around these docks. Uh, let's pick up a square here. Throw it down this bank for a minute. Got him. It's gotta be yellows. They're just nibbling. These are delicious. This is actually in the perch family. Boy, big bass like to eat them too. If you're not really careful, they have these really, really sharp gill plates. They're definitely biting. They're definitely fired up and biting the yellow bass. This is not gonna give you the most exciting fight. It's not what I'm here for, but try to figure out what is going on with all, all the different species. And a lot of times what I find is if I, if I find white bass, if I find, find crappie, if I find whatever, um, those, those fish that are eating bait, you'll end up finding, finding out a lot about the bass too, or maybe you end up being in the same exact area, so. You know, just just knocking the dust off here. Getting oh my gosh, they're just cremating this thing now. It's like they're not even letting it get down there. Oh, there's one. Oh, what in the world? Wow, swimming a jig out from under a dock, giant white bass that is like sunburned on top comes and grabs it <laughs> uh but what can i say guys those things they love me they want to get in the boat with me so so far we've got yellow bass and white bass that means we've got a lot of a lot of shad eaters in the area i honestly thought that was going to be a spotted bass that's normally what happens with spots you'll fish a finesse jig fish it on the bottom then you'll go to start reeling it in and they just chase it and that's how you know they're kind of suspending but that was a sure enough large white bass i've got the pan optics faced at the dock and you can see all the poles and you can see a few fish that are only like five feet down suspended in there y'all it's just just i can't resist <laughs> i'm not gonna keep you today at least for now i just saw this group of crappie on my my pan optics and i you know i never leave home without my crappie jigs got him come here begging just slurping it Finally. Oh, buddy. Oh. There's a green one. Trust me, you don't want to flop around on there too long. It is. It's already burned my feet. And that is on a shallow dock. Much shallower than these others. Ah, just had one eat it right there. A little one. On the swim in. I think I might switch to a crankbait or moving bait. There's one. There, come here. Oh, a little bit. Same exact spot as that last bite that I got. It's right on the backside of the current of these docks. It's like right there in that current where that, that pocket where the current's coming through. Okay, I'm gonna try an open water dock edge for a minute. I'm break out this little underspin. OK, 
Okay, nothing suspended under the docks there. Woo! Time for a little switcheroo, y'all. I just came up the river. This lake is kind of, it's got like an open area in the southern end of the lake and then it starts turning into a river. So I've tried to like go up around the mid lake. Like up here there's reeds, the water's more dirty, it's gonna be more shallow. But I'm still gonna fish around the docks, but just a little different look, you know? I wanna make sure I'm not missing out on some juicies. Chopper coming through. Please point out the bass coordinates, please. Send them down my way. 10-4. Oh, there's one. Oh, that's a big one. Oh my gosh. Come here, buddy. Oh my God, that's a big bass. Oh my gosh, 12 pound line. Oh my God, it's a giant. It is a giant up there, shallow, shallow. Oh gosh, get away from this dock. Get away from the dock, dude. No, 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 no. Oh my gosh. I was not expecting to catch one like that. That's a, that's a hog gamer there. Oh. Come here, sir. That was up there in three or four feet of water. There's no boat flipping this one. gonna have to come from the side here. Oh, come here, dude. Oh, yeah. Fish was stuck nicely in the side of the mouth. There we go. I'm gonna put him in the well just for a second, get him recuperated. I like when their body just takes up most of the live well. It's always a nice sign. That's, that's a solid four pounder or so. Really good fish. This big old deep live well. Come here, baby. Oh, digging around. It's like bobbing for Mondo's. Got her. Whoa. Oh. What a toad-tastic butter bean. Let you go. You're back to your dock. Oh, it's got a little uh, dorsal fin missing right there. Slow swim off. So still using that same jig, I'll just literally move to a different part of the lake and just cracked a good one. It was kind of a weird bite, like the way it just, uh, it was running with it. I knew it was something, but I wasn't sure it was gonna be a big bass, so I just kind of leaned on it, and that little tiny hook, that little sharp hook, you know, this isn't like a, like a flipping style hook. Um, it just goes right in their mouth. Just... And I like to fish uh, a shorter rod when I'm dock fishing, and that is one of the reasons why. Because if you're pitching up close, you got a 7.6 heavy rod, and you just pop them with that, uh, a lot of times you'll break them off, especially if you're throwing like 15. I've broken off 20 plenty of times. So I, I actually downsized uh, my dock rods like five or six years ago, and I, I started breaking off a lot less fish, and I can get it into targets a lot better. So if you're throwing a shorter rod, you just have more accuracy. And for me, the perfect one is like seven to seven two, just somewhere around there. I've got really good accuracy, still, still enough leverage. And uh, I throw a medium heavy. You know, I don't even throw a, a heavy, especially if I'm throwing 12 pound line like I am right here. This is a finesse jig setup I had more for like Highland Reservoirs uh, when I was fishing Broken Bow and whatnot. So as long as you don't pop them hard and they don't run up under the dock into something nasty, uh, you can get them. But I, I kind of got lucky right there because the fish, it went on a pole, but it's a smooth pole. As you can see right here, it's not like all rusted out. So it made contact with the pole and then came back around and I just kept just enough pressure where it swam out and then that's when I really started cranking on it, got it in. You guys ever take a moment to enjoy a nice big pecan log? Well, I'm gonna do that. At least eat a bite of it. Look at the inside of that thing. Boy, that is a boat snack and a half right there. I like that. All right, little shade zone, boat ramp rocks oh, come on 
A little juicy in the juicies right here. Oh, there's one. Go. Oh, come here. Oh, no hook set. No hook set. Don't get around that pole. Hardly a hook set. Ah. Get around there. 12 pound line. This is not good. There he goes. There's that one I was looking for. Just a nice twofer. You know what I'm saying? Just a nice two ski. Oh. <laughs> Apologize. Apologize for the face connection right there on the boat. Woo! Look at that hook, y'all. How it's just gonna bink. He probably worked that hole in his mouth right there when he got around that that pole and was really pulling hard. Look, his tail's still bleeding. Still a bloody tail. So I had my drag set really loose. I was trying to catch up to that fish, but that's a nice, you know, two and a half pound fish. Good fish on the juicy and a little pocket. These fish are shallow, man, shallow. You know, I mentioned, I mentioned this in a video the other day about the fish's mouth, but the water's like mid eighties or it's just over 80 right now. And that water starts to get, you know, high seventies into the eighties and their mouths become pretty loose just having this juicy little juicy jig with a small hook you don't put a as big of a hole in their mouth so they have less of a chance to get off whereas like if you're throwing a a flipping jig with a stouter hook you're putting a bigger hole in their mouth and then they have more of a chance to to escape on you oh dude that thing just took my trailer oh my gosh See if a square bill bang one up here. Oh God, I just had something there. Could have been a gill. All this bait is just shallow. Never fished here before, but it seems like it is a shallow bite. But we got we got to get that finesse jig back in the in the game here. We'll grab one of these little trailers again. This little. Um, cream plastic whatever it is it's not a it's not a bad little trailer y'all that was it there has got to be one on this corner somewhere it's got like a little oh, there's a little bite there bluegill it's got a little corner nook on the other side that looks outstanding Oh God, good golly, you hit it on the way down, suspended. Oh man, what did I just, I came over some fish right there. Oh dude. Fish was suspended and hit the finesse jigs while it was sinking. Got him. Got him. He was sinking, hit it on the sink. A good one. Uh, uh, away from this dock. Get away from this dock. Oh yeah. Oh, it's a big one. Oh my gosh. I think this is the same fish that hit me, and then it came back. <laughs> Suspended. Hit it on the way down. Oh my gosh. Freaking Bertha. Yes. God, I love fishing jigs. You can catch them suspended on the bottom. It's the best utility bait of all time. God, freaking perfect hook set again. Y'all, look at that chunker right there. That one's upper fours. Upper fours, just look right there. That's all you gotta do. Just poink, poink. It just comes right out. And once I poked him, it was open water. He swam out the right way. Whew, what a freaking fatty. A little torn up from the spawn, but been eating up good on bluegill. We'll put him in the well for just a second. That technique right there, I've 
caught a lot of fish on and actually in the 2007 collegiate bass championship the boat us one that uh, i competed in and won with my partner um, this was the technique that i was using i was throwing a finesse jig with a little trailer like this on poles like that letting it sink down and we were in like 30 40 feet of water and right there i was in 17 but the fish hit it in like five or six and if you use a, a trailer like a grub trailer or a little craw trailer it'll sink a little slower and they'll they'll think it's a bluegill while it's sinking on the way down suspended right on those posts and then you ah dude that was that was so cool just a nice fish for a lake i've never been to that's a nice chunky fish you know let's see ya get back on that dock eat those gills Ooh, angry i like when they give me a little sass just good stuff man and catching them on a jig come on now you gotta smash it y'all i love fishing jigs i know i know some of y'all are intimidated on jigs because I, I hear that in comments i hear that just in conversations you know a lot of people just go to the texas rig which is fine do you with the Texas rig, but I'm just telling you, the jigs, they'll bump up your, your Mondo game just a hair. And I just like the simplicity of them, you know? You don't have your weight sliding around or anything. It's all connected right there. What the hell? Oh my gosh, had one on. Got him. Are these largies just chilling on there on that pole that was on a crappie jig mind you they are in there it's going down the hatch Got it. oh those are what's going on okay a lot of folks stop at the bass and they're satisfied i like to catch the bass but i like i like the other ones too the other ones deserve some attention, especially the tastier ones, I think. Here we go. That's like a spotted bass for bluegill that has it. That's a bass. <laughs> Largemouth bass, just not a big one. I felt him doing that same thing with the trailer. I just let him hang on to it. Little guy, little guy. Oh, see ya, bye. Before we go any further, before I catch one of my last few fish through here, it's getting hot. If you're going to use under 15 pound fluorocarbon on something, jig, whatever. Sometimes I do it on my crankbait, especially when I'm going down to like eight pound test. I'm gonna show you guys a knot I haven't shown on this channel for a really long time and it's a double san diego jam it's either double san diego jam or double eugene bend what i'm about to show you is just really good not for fluorocarbon just that's all you got to remember it doubles over what i typically tie which is just a uh, just a uni knot tell you what we're gonna take a little bit more line off because we got wrapped around some stuff when you go to retie don't just retie the end check your whole line like I, I like to take off a whole rod's length worth of line clip that off throw it in our trash can and the scissors are actually key we're going to use the scissors so hang on to those on the double eugene bend you're going to go through let's get in here close you're going to go through pull about a you know, foot and a half a line, maybe a little more. Go back through, just like you would at the start of a Palomar. Take your scissors, hang them for a little extra weight on your lure. Don't drop them in the water. Okay, then you're gonna come up here, you're gonna wrap that around, you're holding all four lines right here at the top then you're going to take this loop in where my index finger is and you're just going to wrap around i use the scissors because it just helps keep keep things 
in place with that extra weight. You go around there four times, and you take this loop, you come up through this loop right here. Then what I like to do is take my teeth since I'm kind of out of hands, and I'll just pull that just like that until it starts to get tight. I'll wet it, pull it down, and then I'll take that extra loop. <laughs> you really use a lot of your fingers here and then just pull all of them. <sighs> there you go. And then you're gonna end up with three tag ends. Make sure you don't cut your main line. So you got your loop, cut that off. Then you got your one little tag in there, cut that off. And now you have the, the strength, you have like almost 100% strength on that knot and there's no crimping whatsoever. I'll get a tight shot of that so you guys can see it, but it doesn't work as well with higher diameter lines because you've got a big bulky knot up in front. But when you have, you know, eight, 10, 12 pound line, it's definitely not as bulky and uh, it's just stronger. So if you want a little bit more oomph, a little bit more clinch on there, Double Eugene Bend, San Diego Jam, whatever you want to call it. Don't know the exact term, but just know holds them very much tightly. Thinking one more. Now it's time to go cool down. Whew. Up in the cranny. Oh, I think one just grabbed it right there. Oh, sure did. That was a good hit too. How did he escape? I'm really not sure. I don't know how that fish got off. He didn't take my trailer. He was just swimming with it. Okay, this one's got it. Yep, that one's got it. A little guy. God, I barely set it and still a big old hole in its mouth, y'all. You see that? Big hole. Luckily, I double, double clutched him. But... Maybe that's why that other one I had got off because he was just tiny, he had a tiny mouth. Oh, are you gonna do it? Are you gonna do it? One last cast. I'm trying to thread the needle here. Oh my, that was a dandy. Sometimes those ace casts don't don't end up with anything, and then you just you know get a backlash and then you catch them. That's a, sometimes how it works. Fish freaks, I'm gonna end it. First time coming out of here, learned a lot. I like the lake, uh, a lot of shallow fishing, and I'll definitely be back. I think it's a pretty cool body of water and a lot more of this shallow stuff to explore. You know, it's just like so daunting. I'm at the point right now where I need to go explore more, but it's gonna take me a lot more time to find uh, some more juicy stuff like this, this, this last stretch that I went through. Fishing Freaks never leave home without your jigs. And if you wanna pick up some juicies, uh, I'll leave a, I'll leave a link down below the, the little juicies, the juicies. I want to thank mystery tackle box again for sponsoring today's video as well. Longtime partner, love working with mystery tackle box, catch you go, the whole team. Good guys. They're actually coming down soon. We're working on more rods, more stuff for y'all. So thank you for tuning in today. If you want to stay tuned for more action like this, go ahead and subscribe. And I'm thinking about doing a like whole day experience. You know, today I'm, I'm obviously editing and everything, but I'm thinking about just doing a live stream one of these days where you get to see every single thing that I'm doing, every single decision, failure, success, hopefully. So let me know in the comments if that's something that you would be interested in. I've never done anything like that. Obviously it'd have to be, it'd have to be somewhere like here where I'm still kind of in the city and have, have some service, but I've been tossing the idea around. Until the next adventure, I'm wishing you the best in all of your dangles. God bless you. See you soon.